back to our show. Last spring, a team of international explorers hoped for the best and prepared for the worst. They crossed the frozen Arctic Ocean by dog sled. They were the first to do it in a single season. For four months, temperatures were below freezing. For four months, they did not see night. And for four months, they were far away from their friends and families. What kept them going? Among other things, the friends they made on the internet, kid friends all over the world. Here now, the trip across the Arctic Ocean by camera, dog sled, and computer. I do not consider it a, a dangerous environment because we know what we're doing. But if you're unaware, if you're not paying attention, you could die within a minute. It's fascinating. I can't believe we're actually interacting with the people. We're here in New York and they're all the way out in the Arctic. We went from Russia to Canada via the Arctic Ocean and on the top of that was the North Pole. My name is Bill Steger. I'm 50 years old, I'm sometimes called an Arctic explorer. I'm definitely an educator. We left on February 28th in Minneapolis on a special charter jet that flew us to Russia. We had all the dogs, all of our supplies, and all the people. And we had one person from the press, and that was Ben Holmberg. Where exactly are you going? We're going to Sredney Island. It's about 2,000 miles from St. Peter. I'm Ben Holmberg. I'm 12 years old, and I live in Ely, Minnesota. My main job there was to collect as much information as I possibly could. He accompanied us right to the very start. Mush on! Throughout the expedition, we had young people reporting the news to their peers, to their own age group. Our major goal in the Arctic Project was to create a live, ongoing drama adventure that the kids could interact with us. We have been following the International Arctic Project's expedition by receiving journal reports through the internet. I'm Ashley Holmberg and, and I'm Ben's sister. Let's go in there right now. On computers at home and at school, millions of kids have been following the daily progress of the explorers. My name is Dana Gold. I'm 10 years old, and I go to Center Avenue School, which is in East Rockaway, New York. Daily reports are basically telling what the team is doing. It says what the weather has been like. The daily reports are written by the members of the team. We can only have so much in an elementary school, but this gives them entree to the world. And he said that he heard a rumbling on the ice as soon as they started the expedition, the ice started breaking up. An extremely bad storm came up and broke the ice up. We were on it. We decided to go back to the land. I am Takako Takano. I'm 32 years old. I'm from Japan. After waiting out an eight-day blizzard on land, the team started to travel across the ice again. So it's so scary because all ice is floating. It's about 12 feet thick, but it's sitting on about 10,000 feet of water. So this ice is always moving by the winds. You have to push your dogs, go there, and then push your sled, and then jump yourself. And you wake up in the morning, you check your location, and you're three, four miles away, maybe eight miles away. So you're on a moving surface, but the ice is not moving as one piece. When two plates of ice collide, they form pressure ridges. When we meet pressure ridges, we chop using pick, and then we make um, enough size for the sled and dogs. That was the trip to the pole. My name is Lauren Whittem. I'm 12 years old from Hillsborough, California. This is my friend Marley Orr. She lives in San Francisco. On April 24th, Marley and I met the International Arctic Project team at the North Pole. Right here. It was Will Steger's dream to really have two young students to meet him up at the North Pole. They came just sparkling and in this harsh environment. The most surprising thing was seeing that it wasn't flat and you never knew what was going to happen. Big pressure ridges start to move, making really deep sound. The pressure ridges sounded like motors. To me, it was like a call from ghost. I have to tell you, I was a little bit nervous when I was up at the North Pole. Sometimes I was wondering whether, you know, a lead would just open up right below me. A lead is when two plates of ice separate and kind of looks like a river. Marley and I went to Will and Victor's tent and we asked them some questions. What's the first thing you guys plan on doing when you get back? We look forward to having a bath or a shower. <laughs> then they came back and reported the news to millions of other kids. The most interesting thing for me is learning about the dogs. We sometimes have a question, well, aren't you too hard on the dogs? 
These, first of all, are specially bred dogs, long hair, very sturdy body, and they're adapted for cold weather. They love 30 below. They have two layers of fur, guard hair, and thick underlayer of fur that keeps them pretty warm, kind of like long underwear. They're also a very wild dog, like a wolf, and they like to run, and they like to pull. They run, you know, eight hours a day, but then they're sleeping at least 12 hours a day. They bury themselves in the snow, and they just leave a little hole for air, and they sleep that way the whole night. It was really hard for a month after the pole. The weather is really bad. All the time, this uh, white out, it's hard to see anything. I respect them in a lot of ways because I know I can never do that. They're basically risking their life to make the world more aware of how important the Arctic is. We directly affect the Arctic in many ways and vice versa. Pollutants travel up by way of air currents to the Arctic region. Then they get kind of swirled around up there and then they come back. It's kind of like a conveyor belt. Towards the end of the expedition, the team had to switch over to canoe sleds because the ice was too thin. We flew the dogs out. It was emotional because we were so attached to the dogs. The team completed its expedition on Ward Hut Island in Canada, having traveled 1,200 miles. They flew back to Ely, Minnesota, Will Steger's hometown. Our deadline in getting off the ice was we wanted to make the parade, so we pushed really hard and we did make it. Coming back home, immediately what hit me was the green around. And also what really strikes me is I'm not moving anymore. I'm definitely more aware of what I do for the environment. Also, I've realized, you know, that you should take as many challenges as you can without risking your life to really live life to the fullest. If you want to be an explorer, then that's what you should be doing. Whatever it is that's in you that is, that is you, make sure you follow through on that. If you follow your dream, you'll be really happy in life.